thank you everybody for coming uh, and I will cede the floor to, um, to, to you all to do introductions and to talk about the protocol and how to uh, properly integrate it uh, for space. Uh, what we need to do, what we can get away with, uh, you know, and, and all that. So uh, why don't you introduce yourself, Steve, to the people that don't don't know you? <laughs> all right. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, my name's Steve, call sign KC1AWV. Um, I'm a systems admin by trade. Uh, I've been doing amateur radio for, well, since 2013. Uh, got involved with the M17 project about two years ago. Um, met Wojciech on uh, IRC. And, um, you know, he had a, uh, a really interesting project that I was, uh, uh, you know, looking at. And I, I said, hey, this is, this is a pretty cool thing. And, um, you know, let's see what we can do with it. And uh, so I kind of became the uh, cat wrangler when it comes to uh, getting all the equipment and, and hardware for making our presence known um, out there. And um, now that uh, most of that work has been done, um, I'm able to take this uh, project and, and turn it into a learning experience for myself. Um, you know, I'm standing on the shoulders of giants when it comes to these sort of things. Uh, G4KLX, uh, W9XO, um, I've got uh, a couple of hams up here that I'm that I'm working with as well. I'm learning a whole lot of lot of stuff from everybody, and um, I'm really looking forward to taking this project a whole lot further. So uh, that's that's who I am, and you know, hopefully uh, I'll stick around, or hopefully they'll keep me around <laughs> for longer. So <laughs> I'm right, trying cool. to earn my keep as uh, as much as possible. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, pick somebody to speak next. Well, uh, in in order of what I see here, I see Mike. So go ahead, Mike. All right. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike, uh, W2FBI. Uh, uh, so anyway, I'm Mike, W2FBI. Uh, I write software. Um, I kind of first got involved with the intersection of ham radio and software uh, with the MD380 Tools project, where I wrote the, uh, the Linux version, the Python version of the firmware upload functionality, and I fleshed out the uh, chirp driver and got it working, but I never actually published that anywhere because it was very hacky. Chirp was only serial capable. Um, that's more or less my background, and I, I've been doing a little bit more RF, and I'm still still learning the DSP and the radio side of things, and uh, that's it. Uh, let's go Rob next. All right. Hi, guys. I'm uh, Rob, WX90. Um, I'm a software engineer by trade um, and started ham radio, started into ham radio about 2012, um, and I've started mobile link to, uh, after playing around with some uh, our electronic stuff and, and uh, designing parts for my for my own use and showing them off and people asking for them. So it was kind of an accident that I, I started the firm, uh, but it's been very successful. I got uh, introduced to uh, M17 last October when Wojciech uh, posted to a uh, MDEBS group on Reddit. Um, I was very interested because I was a little bit disappointed that all of the um, Digital modes on uh, digital voice modes on, on amateur radio. We're using proprietary codecs, um, and their use of, uh, of codec two was was uh, promising to me. Um, so one of the things I discovered was that there really was no uh, uh, over-the-air implementation of, of M17, and so I started working on on getting uh, one of the first uh, M17 voice uh, over-the-air implementations done. Um, just kind of hacked it into uh, our um, uh, our TNCs are, 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 which weren't really designed for this sort of thing, but but seem to work, um, and uh, and and that's what where where I'm coming from, and I'm really enjoying contributing to this project, uh, and I hope to continue even more. Uh, I definitely want to be involved in in the stuff we're working on here. And Rob, I, I want to apologize. I got your call wrong. I I always mix up the nine and the X. <laughs> oh, that's 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 okay. <laughs> Um, so I don't know that I see anyone else on here. My, my screen is a little bit limited. Who would be next? Uh, I would say pick Anshul. Yeah. All right. Uh, hi. Um, so um, I'm, again, a um, software and a hardware engineer by profession, um, mostly into Linux kernel and embedded development. Um, uh, with ORI, uh, I contributed to uh, LDPC encoder. Uh, I am 
that is uh, contributing for FCC regulations regarding debris mitigation. And now um, I'm working on this transponder transmitter part to be specific. Um, that's what, that's what uh, we are here. Uh, I want to understand how we are going to get the uplink packet. So I am 17 and, I, and then uh, I have a GSC block in the FPGA uh, that will do the encapsulation. So we will discuss that in detail. Uh, so these are some of my projects with ORI uh, for other projects I'm working on. Uh, first of its kind, it's a kind of dynamic scheduler for a spacecraft. Uh, so you can change the current task of spacecraft um, dynamically at runtime. So I have my demo maybe scheduled next week or something. That's 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 about me. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Nice to meet you. Same here. And I am uh, Michelle Thompson, W5NYB, and I'm a co-founder and CEO, current CEO of uh, Open Research Institute. Um, and my uh, primary job is to uh, provide resources and remove roadblocks. And uh, my background is in uh, information theory uh, or icky math, uh, which is uh, forward error correction, uh, cryptography, compression, things like that. Uh, I firmly believe in getting stuff working over the air. Uh, if it doesn't work over the air, it doesn't work. And that is uh, the, the source of great joy and great frustration and all yeah. sorts of crazy experiences in uh, getting hardware to work in the lab. I love it. And um, I'm, I'm here to, uh, to help uh, everybody achieve the goals. Uh, I think it's, uh, these are fantastic projects and it's a, a pure privilege to be able to do it. Okay, so Anshul, did you have some particular questions that you wanted to pose? And also uh, anybody else that has any particular questions or, or knows exactly what to say? Uh, please leap right in. Yeah, uh, I will start here. So um, I'm working on this uh, transmitter part. Uh, there is a complete blockchain that, that we have implemented in FPG. And one of the initial block is uh, GSE encapsulation. So earlier we were thinking that we will receive uh, up IP packets via uplink and then GSE will encapsulate form BB frames and then forward it to the other blocks in the chain. Now, uh, then there was a discussion and now we expect that M17 uh, frames uh, will, 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 will be uplinked to that block. And now uh, GSC, uh, my, my block, GSC block will have the responsibility of uh, decoding, demodulating and extracting the IP packets out of that M17 and then uh, encapsulating that IP packet, forming BB frames and forwarding it. Um, I'm sure. Yeah, it should, we should probably explain what we mean by G, GSE. It's the generic stream encapsulation protocol from digital yes. video broadcasting. So what it does is replaces, it's a drop in replacement for MPEG-2 in uh, DVB-S2 and S2X, T2, T2, the, all of those. Uh, so when we say GSE, yeah. that's the GSE we're referring to, generic stream encapsulation. Uh, good, because I was thinking it was ground support equipment. <laughs> yes, this is an overloaded acronym, as a lot of the three letter ones are. So yeah, Anshul is uh, is taking that uh, open protocol, and is we with what we use as our transport uh, stream, um, okay. and so we're we're looking at okay, we want to ship M17 in an efficient manner, and what what sort of what changes do we anticipate? There's the changes that Anshul is talking about, which are protocol. Uh, specific sorts of things. What do we need to do there? The the other part of it is the physical layer for the space channel, since it's different than terrestrial. Uh, where where do, what can we do there? And I, I think I've got a good grip on that one. But the the questions Anshul has, I I don't. Okay, back to you, Anshul. Yeah. So at broad level, uh, that's what how how we can carry out uh, demodulation, deco uh, decoding of M17 frames and what will be the changes required at the protocol layer, uh, how we can, how I can use M17 protocols, um, not protocols, the, the frame fields uh, and uh, translate into um, IP fields uh, because I, I need to decode and get the data, IP data out of it, uh, like Ethernet, uh, MAC address and payload and everything. And then in, put my GSC layer on top of that. Uh, so I'm going to ask, what's the motivating feature here? Uh, it sounds like you're, you're putting IP over M17, where M17 is the RF layer for an uplink. M17 is for uplink. 
Okay. Uh, yeah. So that would be pretty low bandwidth. I mean, we're we're forty eight hundred baud. The we have what uh, thirty two hundred bits of payload on voice streams. We can probably eke a little bit more out of that for mm -hmm. packet formats. So are you are you imagining something really wide bandwidth, or are we just doing really slow speed IP? Um, Michelle. Yeah, I, I can help a little bit here. The um, the the baseline uplink channel width for for us is around about 100 kilohertz, and that's so about about 100 users, about 100 kilohertz. Uh, it, this is channelized in frequency, so uh, what you're speaking to uh, is a big uh, channelizer in the sky or or on on a mountaintop. Uh, so so that's our baseline. Uh, what we would really like to do is allow M17 protocol to simply work, to be the native digital protocol. Uh, this channel can be digitized and the entire thing uh, transported uh, downstream. We'd like to privilege things like M17, that we recognize what it is and use it. So there's plenty of room to grow in the uplink. Uh, you know. It, in, in terms of like a, a limit on the baud rate, we, we don't have one at microwave. So that five gigahertz up or 10 gigahertz up and at 10 gigahertz down or 24 gigahertz down, these sorts of combinations allow you to have a much wider bandwidth. So, so are we the, talking about then changing the, the, uh, the baseband bandwidth that we're using for M17? If, if that is uh, if that's possible, the, I mean, and the answer is is yes. At microwave, you're you're you don't have the same sorts of limits. There, mm. as we saw on Twitter with some discussions between uh, lots of very experienced people, there's an enormous amount of momentum behind uh, particular bandwidths uh, from in amateur radio. We're so accustomed to having, uh, you know, the classical sort of SSB bandwidths but when you go to microwave that doesn't exist anymore and there's a an enormous amount of freedom to take a, a really nice protocol and use the bandwidth you you have now it doesn't just mean that like oh you just change everything uh, you know just because you have the the space uh, so so one of the, the one of the things that's very important to figure out from a, both a protocol and implementation uh, point of view is like here you go there's a bunch of freedom is it is it good to to go ahead and use that uh, or do you want to really preserve this this what feels like a very tiny narrow bandwidth uh, in order to make it completely interoperable to make the radio work in almost every you know across very very different bandwidths okay yeah that's All a little right, so bit I... of the thinking behind it so there is a larger bandwidth here a much higher data rates are possible at microwave that's why we went there okay so fundamentally we're looking at adding a wideband M17 mode uh, and maybe exploring a little bits of, can we also do narrowband in addition to that? Yes. Uh, that, that would also, I remember uh, in Discord earlier, you had been talking about maybe we could do a wider band M17 to have better voice codecs, to get some of that really nice audio quality. Yeah, uh, this so would also enable some of that, which would be kind of cool. Right. So okay. The, that, that does um, bring me back a couple of years. Uh, I, I, Wojciech and I used to kind of joke about this, but there is the idea and the desire to have a satellite mode. Um, I think that's part of the reason that he was so driven to get onto the Q100 satellite. It was to test it out, see if we can shoot it up to the sky and, and hear something back. Um, but I do believe that we should, you know, take a look at it um, as a wider band uh you know, uh, protocol so that we can, we can shove more data into it. We can shove a higher bit rate codec, which uh, a number of people in the chat are, are um, pushing for, um, you know, so I think, yeah, um, this, the, the, this discussion with adding a wideband mode for, for M17 kind of, um, you know, brings me back to that original, you know, discussion that we had a few years, a couple of years ago, you know, and to just expand on that a tiny bit in a completely different direction, I don't know why I said expand. Uh, to answer Anshul's topic, which was where can we put IP fields, MAC addresses, all the uh, the various things you would need for an IP uplink, I think we're going to have to have a specific mode to M17 specifically to des design for that because uh, we have 16 bytes of payload on voice streams and 
with the existing baseband protocol that we have on RF right now, it's it's pretty low, pretty low rate. I'm not sure it'd be a uh, a reasonable design. Uh, I'm sure we can like we could just glue in like okay, here's the M17 thing, packet mode, everything up until you know the next so many number of bytes is going to be your payload, and then sync again and number of payload again. But it's really just kind of gluing something in where it wasn't designed for it. Um, Hmm. Well, there is a there is a packet mode to for M17 that would that might be able to handle some of that. It might be less efficient. Um, we could just uh, if we're if we are going to do IP, we we can just use the six byte uh, that we have for the the sender and receiver as you know just to plop in a MAC address in there, right? That those are six bytes, um, uh, and that yeah. would work. That's what right. I thought. Yeah, those six bytes can be used. Yeah. Um, and then we would have uh, we have a, a payload portion in the in the link setup frame that is uh, really doing nothing in there unless you're doing encryption, um, and so we could repurpose that for some of the IP header pieces that we would need. Yeah, that's 112 bits. Yeah. So, um, other than that, we could just encapsulate uh, IP directly into the packet mode. Um, if we wanted to do that, and that will handle up to uh, eight, almost 800 bytes, I believe, 798 bytes. Well, there we go. Um, the other option that we have, if we're talking about going and, and essentially uh, expanding M17 to be able to work across uh, 100K bandwidth, then we need to decide: Do we make, you know, uh, how, how do we do? We go about doing that, right? Are we, um, are we going to expand the the size of the the packets? Are we going to pack more packets in? Um, each packet has some overhead, right? So all these things need to be discussed in, uh, to to figure out what what makes sense. Um, are we still looking at doing four FSK on on such a channel, or would are, are there better um, modulation options that we would need to look at? Yeah, I can talk a little bit about that. Our uh, baseline um, modulation for the uplink has been four airy uh, minimum shift keying or minimum frequency shift keying for a while. Okay. I mean, because of the benefits that you have for uh, for amplifiers and, and such. Uh, and that made all the RF people happy. So that's not really far away uh, from, right. from what you have. Um, arguably, it's the same. You know, a lot of people consider it the same. Uh, so in terms of like physical layer changes, I didn't see very many. Okay. Um, so that makes that easy. Yeah, then, then we need to look at like, you know, basically layer two and, and how we packetize the data um, and, uh, you know, packet sizes and, and format and that sort of thing. Is it helpful to think of a, like narrow band, wide band mode and have is it helpful at all or to just split it now and talk about it to preserve everything that's been done up to date? Yeah, because, because I mean, I think it seems to be that... working for a lot of like, all these terrestrial applications and repeaters and interoperability and with that, like, is it help yeah. to just like say that this is not something that needs to serve all situations? I, I think so, because I think that there's a huge value in the protocol that's been defined so far right, which is intended to be able to repurpose a lot of terrestrial hardware, right, and just be able to hack in M17 into stuff that already exists off the shelf. So, um, Michelle, uh, and uh, here we are talking about some, uh, is it some major changes? Because uh, from where I'm coming uh, is, uh, Michelle, uh, we have a demo in August, uh, and I want to demo complete transmitter with M17 uplink, uh, and then I'm doing GSE encoding and then forwarding it. So what the changes that you are mentioning, uh, are they going to take a lot of time, or can I expect a simple stream, test stream, uh, which I can use and then experiment on that with the changes, Rob, that you have suggested? I mean, I don't know what, what the rest of the team thinks, but it almost seems like all we really need to do is take the existing baseband, the GSE uh, format, and then just put Codec 2 in there. I, I don't know what else you would really need. Is there anything more that, that we would need for that? It, 
doesn't there's always unintended consequences of you know making <laughs> there's always unintended consequences but it doesn't seem to me like there's um like it's a impossible or intractable thing to say okay now okay. we're going to make it wide wideband simply because of the quality and, and thoughtfulness of the existing protocol it seems like it should be uh something that we could go ahead and try uh you know and and see see what happens uh we have a number of people that are much more um uh, you know uh, much more experienced and and have uh, uh, a lot of um skill in in figuring out oh you know wow your frame you, if you change the frame here for this broadband or broader band uh, application, you're going to have to do X, Y, or Z. One of the big concerns, uh, I think, is overhead, of course. You know, so right. so what you need to do is size the the frames and the packets and the payloads and the overhead. You know, it has to be balanced. Uh, and I think most people that work in this sort of field have an intuitive grasp for that. And it's now a question of tuning. And we do have a lot of people scattered around both of our communities that are that are good at that. So my confidence is very high that if we go ahead and commit and and put out uh, some sort of proposal, go ahead and write it up and let Onshul, you know, grip into it and and give it a shot, uh, that we'll see uh, where the the edges are, you know, where the rough edges are and where the bottlenecks are. So I don't see any deal breakers in the protocol, uh, it, it, you know, and then making a wideband version of it. Um, I'm, you know, now I am a raging optimist, so you know, <laughs> you know uh, everything you should take what I say probably with a little grain yeah. of salt. But honestly, it's it's a it's a real quality protocol, and everybody that's looked at it has said this is really this is better than our native protocol that we've been doodling for a couple of years now. It's it's the right direction. It's where we were headed, and it's just better. And we should enthusiastically embrace it and use it and support it because it's uh, open throat. You know open source and uh and all that all right back to you so i had a, a thing to add which is i bought four of the f4 hdk or dhk don't quote me on his call sign uh, he has four ip modems where it's a it's a nucleo and a radio setup and it he has like a TDMA IP network thing going on there. And I looked at that and it was just Arduino. And I figured I was going to go take a look at that and see if I could bring M17 to that for, because mm. I am interested in M17 doing IP and I was already looking at, well, maybe I'm going to want something wider bandwidth. So I, if those are capable of doing anything interesting, the baseband, sorry, the, the RF, uh, the physical layer may be a little different, but at least it would be interesting for looking at IP framing and real world uh, mm. stuff like that. So I'm interested because I want IP on M17. It's just I'm planning on doing uh, some application layer stuff glued in directly to kind of avoid some of that overhead directly. No, is that a lot along the same lines as that uh, new packet radio thing that I've seen? It's exactly that. Okay. Same same hardware. <clears throat> so, same hardware, uh, just a different modulation. Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't honestly. I just I'm not got sure excited and bought. Four FSK or. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I know that the like the one of the lower speeds that he already has programmed is like 56k, mm -hmm. and I was hoping to to see what it can do. Um, I, I honestly I got excited because I figured I'd, I'd buy it, and even if I can't change it, if I can't, you know, maybe I got myself in over over my head, which has happened before. Worst case, I have four cool packet modems, you know, so. Something to do the tropa scatter stuff that I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Might be a little low power for that, but there's always always more things to play with on that front. Uh, so I'm interested. So what what are our next steps for like what do you what do you need from us, Anshul, uh, yeah. to start playing with this? Uh, I mean, uh, initially, um, I I need to understand uh, like Rob mentioned, how will the headers uh, will be form so that uh, I, I can how I can map those headers to IP uh, okay. related things so a small documentation for that uh, that should be done and uh, if I can join your group so that uh, I can post any questions and discuss with you on slack channel or whatever tool you are using oh good all right I was uh, yeah. I was hoping you'd, uh, you'd uh, want to do that 
Uh, so I'll make sure we get you, I'll send you a link to the, uh, the Discord or the IRC okay. or the Matrix. They're all interbridged. Uh, okay. So you can pick whichever you like. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah, and then I can uh, go through the documentation, improve it, discuss, and then uh, I will start with my implementation of GSC, considering um, I can map those packets, uh, I can map uh, IP packets, uh, and inca encapsulate GSC. And so I will start with the implementation of that. Along with that, I will uh, carry on my discussion with you parallelly, and then let's see how it progresses. Excellent. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. Are, is there a baseband implementation uh, for GNU Radio that we could play around with? Yeah, we use GNU Radio quite a, quite a lot. Mm. Um, I think Onshul and the others that are that are working on all the the, the guts of it. Um, the we all rely on GNU Radio. The the sorts of bandwidths though that we're using, um, yep. we've we've run out of GNU Radio. Um, GNU Radio's ability to, to support. Like when I do demos of the polyphase filter bank for the uplink, I have to use a very small uh, cut down thing. So that's really the only yeah. uh, drawback to, to using GNU Radio, but there is an implementation of GSE. We have implementation yeah. of LDPC and we want to have a reference design in GNU Radio for as much as possible for everything that we do. So it's, it's not a bad sort of common uh, uh, implementation. Um, so I don't know, Anshul can probably expand a little bit more, uh, more on that. Uh, but we're very heavily reliant on GNU Radio to, to right. do a lot of this work. Uh, like for instance, yeah. like the beacon that we're putting together is, is being lashed up in GNU Radio, um, you know, with, with off the shelf SDRs and, um, you know, would not be, would, would not be able to, to put it in the field quickly uh, without GNU Radio. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, yeah, as as Michelle mentioned, that we are using GNU Radio heavily uh, for uh, for every stage output. Uh, we use GNU Radio for validation and even for coding for FPGA. Uh, we first consult GNU Radio. What's the logic there? And then we implemented FPGA for GSC. Uh, we have a module in GNU Radio, uh, but that's for yeah IP, but nothing for M17. Yeah. What, what hardware are you guys using that you're targeting? Uh, you know, with your FPGA work. This is ultra scale FPGAs and seven, like 7,000 zinc uh, series FPGAs. Okay. Yeah. Is there a specific uh, hardware, uh, you know, uh, SDR that you're using? We use any SDR we can get our hands on. The ones oh. that have been the most reliable have been the USRPs in the lab. We've used blades, hack RFs, uh, tons of RTL SDRs for uh, lower bandwidth work. Um, we've used, let's see, the, for, for moving more towards towards RF, the uh, analog devices dev board that that bolts right up to the 7000 series thing, and Got all it. this is accessible for in the remote lab. So, um, you know, that's the, the goal is to try to get this stuff into people's hands and accessible with all the test equipment. Um, but yeah, the, the those are the generally the go to SDRs have been the either the X310 little bit finicky with its particular FPGA uh, accessibility, but the B210 has been a real workhorse for us and has helped us validate a whole ton of things. Is the uh, uh, ADLM Pluto too small for, for what your guys are doing? No, it really isn't. And we have one. Um, and it's just a question of like who grabs what and works on it. The exciting thing about the Pluto is that uh, AMSAT DL is working really hard on spinning a version of the Pluto with has, which has a greatly upgraded uh, clock and uh, some other some other upgrades that make it uh, really uh, much more useful for space. And that the reason, one of the big reasons there is not just for their engineering team and for those of us that want to do SDR work, um, you know, because it's remarkably inexpensive and easy, relatively yeah. easy to get. Um, but because the Pluto has been such a go-to um, device for the QO100 uh, ground stations in, in Europe. Exactly. So that's... They've also modified the hardware so that you can actually plug in yeah. uh, you know, your own clocks in there. So that's really yes. nice. Yeah, it's 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 neat. Um, they're they're relative, at least here in the United States, it's pretty easy to get analog devices before COVID to show up to your event and to give a bunch away. So that's oh, they're good. they're plentiful on the ground, and the only reason why uh, it's not grabbed more often in the lab here 
um, is because we already had a B210 and already were accustomed to using it. That's really the only reason. And also the, a little bit different bandwidth, you know. Yeah, I mean, they've, they've also got more FPGA resources, so you're not trying to fit something into a smaller piece. You can do that optimization later if necessary. Yeah, we, we use, we enthusiastically use any SDR that can be put in the traces to got get it. work done. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, so it sounds like we have a lot of things to work on here. Um, I think I probably need to read up on uh, the GSE stuff and figure out how we're going to do the mapping. Um, I can spend a little bit of time on that, but I, I, I do have to say, I don't have a lot of time to spend on this myself. <laughs> understood. Any, uh, the, the, understood. This is my third job. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, we, uh, uh, no, I, every, everyone's time is absolutely, um, precious. Uh, time once you spend, you can never get it back. Therefore it's priceless. So it's deeply appreciated. Um, uh, by all of us. Yeah, yeah GSE um, so is other... fun. And there's a GSE yeah. uh, protocol document from DVB.org. DVB.org has all of their stuff uh, there. And it, it really is good. It's not a solution for insomnia, um, unlike a lot of other protocol documentations, which are right. just terrible. And they have an implementation guideline. And most all yeah. of their standards do. And it's really good, too. So. Yeah. You know, it's uh, it's it's pretty good. I think Anshul is up to date with all the with all the GSE stuff. I I know enough to be dangerous about GSE. Uh, you know, so there's plenty of, plenty of help. Uh, and and I guess the overall goal is not to uh, harm or disrupt or, uh, you know, uh, annoy, irritate, fold, spindle, mutilate M17 at all. You know, we just we're hugely enthusiastic about it, and we see great potential for. Uh, using it in a broader bandwidth microwave application. So if there's if there's something that just doesn't feel right or or you see an alternative to to something we're we're suggesting or looking at, uh, then you're the experts and you know we are gonna we're gonna listen to you. Okay. I think that one thing that would be really important for us to to keep is um, the IP integration that we currently have with uh, uh, with M17, right? There's a lot of, right now, that's kind of the main use is right is over IP. Would you agree with that, Steve? Yeah, definitely, yeah. A um, lot of it is, uh, you know, reflector to reflector or reflector to client. So, you know, it's, uh, I think Rob was just trying to make sure that I was still awake here. <laughs> 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 to be well, honest with you, I'm, in the, I'm in the office. <laughs> I'm in the office, so it's like I got people coming in. I got you know, lunch lunch just arrived. Right. <laughs> so, uh, our M17 over IP right now is is do we have we actually defined uh, the the packet modes over IP? I thought it was all voice, but I, I admit I haven't actually read the whole protocol through recently. It's in the spec, isn't it? Well, I mean, I know we have. IP framing, but I, I thought it was only for voice or slash stream mode. I haven't looked at that. That's not, uh, I, I'm an over the air guy. Like if I wanted to do VoIP, I have, you know, Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, we need a video conference uh, sub mode. <laughs> hey, there you go. Now that's an idea. We'll replace amateur TV with uh, M17. Yeah. I mean, if we have the wider bandwidth. Yeah. We can uh, pretend it's the 1990s and we're all in ICQ again. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> Very good. All right. So we, is that the the next steps? Yep. The, the header, how is the header formed? How is it mapped? Keeping, yeah. you know, kind of getting our way through, uh, starting on GSE, carrying on from there. Does that sound, yep. sound good? Okay. Yep. Any Any last questions or comments? Yeah, where do I buy really cool NASA shirts? Ah, this is uh, I well, I made this one, so. Uh, oh. It's a uh, very it's nice. A little tricky to get, but Joanne's Fabrics has this one <laughs> all the time. Are they really? Yep. I I am not do. good enough to make a shirt yet. Oh, of course you are. You could do it. It's. I I can do pillowcases. If you can do a pillowcase, you can do a shirt. 
You just cut a, <laughs> just cut a hole in the top and two in the side. That's <laughs> that is that is and, true. And you're, you're almost there, you know. But yeah, Joanne's Fabrics has a whole collection of NASA space mission rocket fabric. It's really fun. So it's all it's reliably there in Joanne's Fabrics. I have a, a Star Trek pillowcase. So oh, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> very good. <laughs> Cool. Okay. So, is there, all right. Any other questions about last minute question about banking, logistics? Anybody want to talk about anything at all? And then, yeah. I, okay. I so, have if a anybody few if, messages if, here from Voychuk. Okay. Then, if you, if you want to drop off the call and go do fun protocol things, uh, please. Yeah, I will please, drop off. Please do. <laughs> and if you want to hear about wonderful banking and logistics, then you're welcome to stay. <laughs> no, I know I'm really selling this time, side yeah. of the project, you know. But... <laughs> okay, well, thanks, Andrew. Thank you. It's so Saturday soon. evening and my kids are calling me. Yeah, I, I heard. Yeah. Yeah. See you soon. <laughs> thank you. And Mike, nice please invite me to the channel. Yeah. Yes, we'll be awesome right now. Okay, thank you.